Good morning, Eagle Mountain. So good to see everyone here. By everyone, I mean, well, it's a small crowd. But we are singing to the Facebook community as well. So we're happy to be here. It's been a rough week for some. There's been a lot of sickness. And now we have weather to contend with. Doug and I were caught in Arthur yesterday when the freezing rain came early, and, and it was pretty scary. We waited about an hour until the road crews were out and cleared the roads so that we could get back on and get home. So we are glad to be here today, and um, we just hope that the two of us can sing a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's our goal. We're missing Tara and family today. They're homesick. We miss them, and... We want to definitely include them in our prayers today. So if we can bow our heads and say a small prayer before we get started. Lord, we just ask you, we come before you humbly and ask you to please be with us this morning. Holy Spirit, please be with us. We're a small group, small intimate group this morning, but we do have a big Facebook following and we just hope that we can sing beautiful songs and the pleasing to you lord we just pray the blood of jesus over those that are sick and those that were out in weather yesterday and we just ask that you'll please watch over all and please heal those that are sick you say by your stripes you can heal father we ask all of this in jesus name amen to worship and although this the group is small it's mighty and and I feel the anointing in this room so our next song is Holy Spirit I think it's it's uh, uh, known by all we are just kind of abbreviating it a little bit and without the bass and the drums the bridges don't really make sense so we're just gonna sing the verses in the chorus and uh, We'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. Mm, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord. well that that worked just fine didn't it that's so pretty and i'm always um kind of thrilled to be up here playing God's music with my wife and thank the Lord that I don't sing much so you know so she can take that burden Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. guys going to do a song during our offering? Yes. All right. We'll, make, we'll keep it to the point here, but uh, thank you each and every one of you for being here at Eagle Mountain today. It's so good to be able to be in God's house. You know, we, uh, we kicked it around among the elders. You know, do we just pull the plug on service today? Do we have it? And just, you know, for whoever chose to come today, we felt it was important the house of God is open. You know, when times are tough, we especially need this connecting place. And so uh, those of you here physically, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, those joining us on Facebook, 
thank you for being with us. Um, we're going to receive our offering now, and uh, I do have some uh, little bottles of oil that are up here. This, it'll say on it, biblical anointing oil. I'm not sure how it became biblical, but it is anointing oil. I'm going to talk about healing this morning. And so if you would like one of these oil bottles up here uh, to use in your own family prayers or for uh, extended ministry needs, feel free to take one of those. But I'm going to pray. Uh, today's Mission Sunday, and uh, we, believe it or not, as we look around, this is a, like a record-breaking year for missions in Eagle Mountain. And so uh, thank you for everybody that's uh, made a pledge to missions. So... Uh, Bring your missions gifts today as well as your regular tithes and offerings. Let me just pray for us. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you supply all of our needs. God, you are faithful. And Jesus, we just invite you to come right now to uh, bless this offering, provide the needs of each person, God. We thank you for those out there watching through Facebook. It's been incredible in the past two years just to see how you've supplied needs and blessed our people and provided for our church and so, God, I just thank you for every gift, whether brought in person or mailed in or sent in through PayPal. God, we just thank you uh, for your blessing upon this offering now. We invite you into it in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel free to come on up. I've heard you can take what's broken and make it whole again. Here's the pieces of my heart. What can you do with them? Cause I can't hold it all together anymore. So I let them fall surrendered to the floor you make all things new you make all things new God of mercy and love do what only you can do and make all things new only you can bring such beauty from the depths of all my pain only you can take this shattered heart and make it beat again oh you hold us all together in your hand I surrender all I have and all I am. You make all things new. You make all things new. God of mercy and love, do what only you can do. And make all things new. From the ashes, from the dust, I will rise up, rise up. Out of darkness and into the light, I will rise up, rise up. From the ashes, from the dust, I will rise up, rise up, out of darkness and into the light, I will rise up, rise up. You make all things new, you make all things new, God of mercy and love, do what only you can do. You make all things, all things. You make all things new.
Doug and Dawn, we appreciate that very much. Their willingness to be instant in season and out here today. Uh, we appreciate that. We've, uh, I'm sure, have more people out there with us on Facebook than we have here in present. And uh, I just want to say a word to the Facebookers out there. If you could just sign in and just basically say, hey, I'm here. Uh, and if you have a prayer need, put that down. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, so just, just fill that in and uh, send us a message. And uh, we, will, we will pray for you. And that way we'll know that you're with us. A uh, couple things to announce. Our men's breakfast we were supposed to have yesterday for the very reason that we have this situation this morning. We decided we would bump the men's breakfast to next Saturday, and uh, hopefully that is a better situation. So uh, we'll, we'll put that back a week. And then also the same with the Bible study tonight. I really didn't want to start our first of our Bible study series out with like six people present. So... Uh, we're going to kick that to next Sunday night uh, at 6 o'clock. And um, regardless of where you are in your Bible study experience or knowledge level, um, this would be a good study for you, and I hope that you will consider joining us and, and being a part of that. So uh, that is next Sunday at 6 o'clock. So I think that's uh, it in the way of announcements. I knew we were going to be in trouble today when I heard so many reports from people that, uh, hey, pastor, I'm not going to make it, or not feeling good, or um, <clears throat> was exposed to somebody, which is uh, a big thing going on right now. There's a lot of people that aren't sick, but they're quarantined and at home because that's, you know, what, what we want to do uh, as Christians. Uh, I myself have been sick this week, late afternoon, Tuesday, started getting a little bit of a cough and, and uh, just kind of felt puny, stayed home Wednesday, worked at home, and, uh, but Thursday was a little better and yesterday was a little better, uh, and so I feel like I'm on the mend, but I am intentionally staying away from everybody. And so that's, I'm not trying to avoid shaking your hand. I'm not afraid of you. I just don't want you to pick up anything that I might have. So uh, that's my reason for being a little distant this morning. But uh, uh, Mary Ann was exposed to uh, COVID at, uh, at school this week. Uh, she's going to do uh, an in-home test this afternoon. So uh, Keep her in your prayers. I'm, I am not sure how our school district is going to keep functioning in, in the middle of all this here this week. That's going to be really interesting. But uh, it has just been a challenging time uh, for many of us. And so today I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift gears. I had a different message prepared. And uh, in light of the, the times that we are in, I thought it would be a good time to be reminded about what the Bible says about divine healing. It is the topic on everybody's mind. I'm either sick or know people that are sick or are, I'm afraid I'm going to get sick. And I just feel like a good reminder from the Word of God will, one, help us not to walk in fear. How many of you believe Jesus does not want us walking in fear? I mean, that is just... You know, if, if you want to know if the devil's at work, all you got to do is look, is there any fear going on? Because that is what the devil uses. He, he uses lies to lead us into fear because the Holy Spirit always leads us towards God and to trust him. And the devil always uses lies to lead us away from him. And thus we have fear. Uh, when you think of Adam and Eve in the garden, what was the very first emotion that they felt when they sinned, right? They were, they were afraid because they were naked and they knew they had broken God's command. So <clears throat> we know how the devil operates. He wants us to operate in a, a spirit of fear. So 
this, uh, this whole sickness thing has been a battle uh, for a long time for us in America. But most recently for Marianne and I, I you know, you guys that are here kind of know the little journey that we've been on. I had a melanoma removed from my ear, and uh, they've got that all. I didn't have to have a skin graft, and so that's good. I'm going to cough just a minute. <coughs> Get a little tickle in there once in a while. So that was a good thing to uh, get that report that the melanoma was uh, removed and all was well. But that was a faith battle. And the enemy tried to, to bring fear in out of that. And then uh, Marianne ended up having a, a mammogram they didn't like. And bottom line, they recommended that she get an MRI. And uh, that was a, a scary thing, particularly as there was a long delay in between when she got the MRI and when the results came back. And so we had a lot of time in there to decide if we were going to be filled with faith or filled with fear. You know, I mean, that is that is it. Waiting for those lab results can sometimes feel like a lifetime. And so pleased to say that the report on that was there was no cancer. There's some things her doctor wants to talk to her about, but there's no cancer, and we rejoice in that. Um, so my point in saying that is, that this whole battle against sickness and disease has, has really been a part of the elder household here in the last two and a half months or so. And then you put on top of that all the, the COVID stuff going on. And uh, I don't ever want to assume, I mean, I've, I've had the privilege of going to Bible college and, and studying God's word as a pastor for 33 years. And, and, I've learned some things about how to fight this good fight of faith. And I don't want to just presume that, you know, everybody is there. And so this morning I just want to share some, some practical things and some reminders about the healing power of Jesus. This is, I've titled this, uh, The Crash Course on Healing the Sick in Jesus' Name. <coughs> This is our battle, isn't it? I mean, we didn't ask for this pandemic. We didn't expect this pandemic to come, but here it is. And you think, oh, well, look what it's done to the church. Yeah, but, you know, the church is still alive and well. And all the Facebook folks out there said amen nice and loud so I can hear you. Amen. Amen. So the church is alive and well, but we've got opportunities here to have a message of faith not a message of fear. We have an opportunity to speak up boldly for the truth that the power of Jesus can change things. And so I always want to anchor this back to what the Word of God says because it is in the Word of God that we have confidence. This isn't just about um, you know, some little side doctrine that we believe, but divine healing is a big part of, <coughs> of what we are supposed to be about as Christians. So I want us to start out, we're going to go through several verses of Scripture. This first one's going to be the longest one, but it is important. Isaiah 53. If you want to understand healing and Jesus' miss, mission as a healer, Isaiah 53 is a great place to start. So here we go. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, and nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Now, let me just pause here. Isaiah is speaking prophetically about the suffering servant. That's 700 years before Jesus shows up. But he's laying out specifically the mission of the suffering servant, Jesus. He was despised, verse 3, despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Now this is a key verse. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, 
smitten by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are what? Healed. By his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us have turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. <clears throat> By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? He was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. <coughs> Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And after the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. And by his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. <coughs> By his stripes we are healed. Now, a lot of people will look at that passage and they will say, you know what, what Isaiah was talking about there? He was talking about delivering us from sin. Delivering us from sin. That that's, that's the whole point on there. And that is certainly one of the points. But we cannot cut healing out of Isaiah 53 because no less an authority than uh, the gospel writer Matthew uh, Matthew tells us, in fact, let's go ahead and go there, Liz, Matthew eight fourteen to 17. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. And here's the kicker. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. Do you see that there? No less an authority than Matthew under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit says that when Jesus healed the sick, he did it in fulfillment of Isaiah 53. That Jesus' mission when he came to earth was to be a healer and that healing was accomplished through the ministry of the cross. We can't let anybody talk us out of this. I mean, I've, I've heard it. You've probably heard it too. Well, healing, healing ended when the last apostle died. How many of you ever heard that story? You know, nobody's healed anymore. When the last apostle died, that was over. Or, well, we have doctors now. And we don't really need healing anymore. Really? Healing came through the atonement, through what Jesus paid on the cross. And so, if you had any question, any doubt, that Isaiah 53 not only implies we are delivered from sin when Jesus died on the cross, but we are also healed of sickness and disease. If you had any doubt that that really applied to sickness, this passage in Matthew just kind of like clears it all away. Jesus, it's, it's, it's either both or it's nothing, right? Jesus is either here to be the, the sacrifice for sin and the healer of sickness and disease, or if he's not the second, then he's not the first either. It is a package deal. Jesus is not just the deliverer of sin, but he is also the healer of sickness. Now, aren't you glad? Let's whoop and holler, make it sound like we've got a big crowd here. Woo! 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Man, all 300 people here this morning are excited. Praise God. We serve a mighty God. Jesus is in the healing business. And so here's another hundred that just walked in. I mean, this is, this is great. Praise God. Our numbers have just like tripled. So, <coughs> so this, this whole message of healing is so powerful because it is exactly what we need. You think of Jesus' ministry. If, if you were to ask somebody, tell me something you know about what Jesus did when he was on earth. Probably the first thing they'd come up with was he healed sick people, right? I mean, you can't separate Jesus' healing ministry from, from his life on earth. So, it's a part of the cross. It's a part of what was purchased for us when Jesus died for our sins. Jesus is our healer by the authority of the Old Testament, by the authority of the Gospels. But it goes further than that. Let's go to Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. I'm just going to read off the screen here. This is Peter. Now he's talking to Cornelius in his house. And for those of hundred of you that just arrived, uh, we are talking about the healing power of Jesus because we are in a sick season right now and we need to understand that there's no reason to live fearfully, right? We don't live in fear, we live in faith because we've got a healer and his name is Jesus. So now you're all up to speed, all, all hundred of you. So Peter is preaching his heart out. He's talking to Cornelius. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. So let me ask you a question. Where does sickness and disease come from? It comes from the devil, doesn't it? He is the author of sickness and disease. That's Peter's message here. Jesus healed all who were under the power of the devil because the power of God was with him. Sickness is an attack of the enemy. You go back to the garden again. Satan deceived mankind into sin disobedience to God, eating from the fruit of the tree that, that was forbidden. And through that, they died spiritually, right? They were separated from God. God had said, in the day you eat this fruit, you're going to die. So Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the garden. You remember the story? And boom, they dropped dead. No, they didn't. What was going on? Spiritually, they separated themselves from God by disobeying him and spiritually they died and into that spiritual vacuum Adam and Eve and all of their forebears down to us had the devil slipped in there and took man's power and supplanted God in the lives of mankind and so through sin led to to separation which led then to sickness and disease, and ultimately death. It was never God's plan for us to die. Do you believe that? It was never God's plan for us to die. We hate death. It hurts. It's wrong. It was never God's plan for it to be that way. But the devil came in and, and deceived mankind. And so today we contend with sickness and death. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. I love that verse, uh, 1 John chapter 3, 8. Liz, let's go ahead and, and, and read that one. This is John, one of Jesus' apostles. He said, he, was, he who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Jesus did not come for us to manage sin and sickness. He came to destroy it. He came to make all things new, Doug and Don. That's, he came to give us a new way of life, a new, 
approach to life where we're not bound by fear, but even though it's a fallen world, the power of God is still there on our behalf to heal, to restore, to make all things new. Yes, we're going to die someday if Jesus tarries. Uh, Yes, we're going to leave this world, but we don't have to leave it afraid, and we don't have to leave it bound up in sickness and disease. I love the story of Moses. Moses was 120 years old. And when the time of the end came for him, it said his eye was not dim, nor his vigor abated. In other words, he was the baddest 120-year-old you'd ever want to meet. Moses was one tough dude. He walked with God, and God sustained him. And when his mission was done, God took him home. So yes, sickness is is a work of the enemy. Let's let's not mince mince this, this understanding that when we encounter sickness, we are literally coming into contact with darkness. Sickness is a work of the enemy, and he wants to steal, to kill, and destroy. And how many times has he used sickness and disease to exactly do that? To destroy families, to destroy business, to destroy life. Jesus came to destroy the devil's work. How many of you think that's good news? All right, that was 200 of you. That's pretty good. Jesus came to destroy the devil's work. I like that. I'm on the winning side. I'm not under the devil's thumb of fear. I am a guy walking in faith, believing that Jesus is going to do and be everything he said he would do and be. How about you? You know, I, I don't think Jesus changes. In fact, I'm pretty sure it still says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus is what? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If Jesus' primary mission to, to coming to earth was to deliver people from sin and heal them from sickness, how many of you think that should be our job too? Right? I mean, we're Jesus' representatives. And so, let's go to the next verse. In John chapter 14, verses 11 through 14. Jesus says, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Now let me pause there. What had Jesus been doing? He'd been doing what? Miracles, right? He said, if you're going to believe, believe on account of the miracles. You know, I'm doing stuff that nobody's ever done. So he says, if you have faith in me, you will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. That's pretty bold, isn't it? That's some bold stuff. Jesus said, you know what? I'm doing miracles, and when I go to my Father, I'm going to be up there advocating for you. You can ask me anything, and and I will do it. And so he said, you're going to do greater things than, than I did. So we have a mandate to continue the mission of Jesus. If Jesus healed the sick, how many of you think the church should be in the business of healing the sick? Not just, uh, well, you know, maybe if it's God's will. How many of you know it's always God's will to destroy the works of the devil? It is always God's will to destroy the works of the devil. We have a mission and a mandate. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but don't think that things are, are going to get, get worse. It's going to get better because there's more of you, and you're going to be out there proclaiming the truth, and you're going to be my witnesses, and you can lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. There was a, 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 an anointing of power that Jesus passed on to us. Do you believe this? I mean, it's a tall order, isn't it? And he said, well, frankly, Pastor, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing this happen. I'm not sure, you know, how to feel about it. I have struggled on the issue of divine healing. 
Because I've prayed for people and they've died. And I've prayed for people and they've been delivered. So if you ask me to pray for you, you take your chances. But the fact is that if I just were to stop saying, you know what? Not everybody I've prayed for is healed, so I'm, it, this doesn't work. If I were to just quit because somebody didn't get healed, you know what? The result of that would be that nobody would get healed because we wouldn't be praying for anybody, would we? we say, well, you know, I prayed for my mom and she died, so, you know, I'm just like, I'm not doing that anymore. You know what? I'm going to keep doing it because Jesus says to do it. Jesus says that these signs shall follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so it is up to me to stand on that truth and believe that and to get engaged in this fight, which leads us to the next verse in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. This is the classic spiritual warfare passage. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. See, there it is. Who are we fighting? The Democrats. No, we're not fighting the Democrats. Who are we fighting? Who are we fighting? We're not wrestling here against flesh and blood. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Do you see it? Wherever there is a conflict between light and dark, people, people are just the pawns. There's a battle going on in the spirit realm. The devil is out to make people sick. He is out to make people divided. He is out to ruin marriages. He is out to break off parents and children from one another. He is out there to separate, to divide, to disturb, to cause chaos, to addict and to bind. He is out there trying to do everything he can to ruin every good thing in this world. And we have to recognize this is where we step in. Next verse. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, well, when, when's the day of evil? Let, let's just start with today. What do you think? This, this one isn't going so well, is it? I mean, church attendance in America is probably down to about a tenth of, of what it might typically be. Well, this sounds like the day of evil, doesn't it? So when the day of evil comes, well, well, how do you know when it's going to come? You don't know. That's why you're ready every day, right? That's why you wake up and you say, okay, devil, I'm going to put on my armor because you're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to steal my family. You're not going to steal my health. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. So, therefore, put on the full armor of God so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. How many of you think that sounds like a battle? Standing your ground. You're going to have to fight for this. Stand your ground. And after you have done everything, that sounds like work, doesn't it? After you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let's pause right there. So we've got the shield of faith on one arm, and we've got the sword of the Spirit in the other arm. The shield of faith is what we use to protect us from the lies of the enemy. How many know devil's always out there shooting arrows at you? He wants to make you afraid. You're going to get sick and die. You've got COVID. It's all over for you. You're going to be on a ventilator. And the devil's shooting his arrows at you. And you're like, "Uh uh-uh, devil, I'm catching those with my shield of faith because I believe that Jesus is my healer. I'm not receiving that, right? I'm not receiving those lies because they are lies. They're not what the truth of God says. The truth of God says that by his stripes I'm healed. So I'm going to take my word of God in this hand and I'm going to swing that sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I'm not going to let the devil pump me full of lies and get me afraid. Does that make sense? 
There is a battle of truth going on. I tell you, there's a lot of voices out there telling us to be scared. Come on now, that deserved an amen. There's a lot of voices out there trying to tell us to be scared because scared people can be controlled. Come on now, I'm, 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 I'm going to meddling a little bit here. All right, thank you, Tony. Amen. There, scared people can be controlled. I watched It's a Wonderful Life this past week. I cried at the end like I always do. I, sometimes I'm just like, I am going to make it. I'm going to make it. And it still, it grabs me every time. But you know, old man Potter had a line. He said, you know what? They're, those people are scared. He's talking about the bank run. He said, you and I, George, we kept the banks open. You know why? Because those people that closed the banks, they were scared. But you and I weren't. And the banks stayed open. You know, a little spiritual truth there. If we're not scared, we're going to stay open. We're going to stand strong. We're not going to give in. We're not going to buckle down. We know the day of evil's coming. But we're going to take that, that shield of faith and that sword of the Spirit, and we're going to fight this good fight of faith. All right, next verse. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Oh, my goodness. This all sounds like hard work. It'd just be easier to stay home and eat chicken soup and watch Netflix. And there's nothing wrong with eating chicken noodle soup and watching Netflix. But if... If that's all we're doing, there's a problem. Come on now, that was good preaching there too. If, if that's all you're, I mean, that's what the world's doing, right? They're binge watching Netflix and eating chicken soup and drinking uh, juice and whatnot. And, and they're just kind of waiting for the whole thing to pass. But that's not what we as Christians are called to do. We are called to be people who see this conflict for what it is. And we are not going to take it lying down. We're going to resist the devil. And the Bible says what? You resist the devil and he will do what? He will flee from us. You see, Jesus won that battle for us on the cross. We've been delivered from sin. If we'll receive that message, we have the gift of eternal life. And he also heals our bodies from sickness. And if we believe that message, even though we may have to fight to see it manifested, it is ours because it came to us from Jesus through the cross. So Marianne and I, we have been doing a lot of fighting. Now don't misunderstand. Oh! We have been fighting the devil and his attacks against our family because, you know what, we're just not going to take this. We know cancer is not God's will for our lives, right? So, I mean, we've, she's had her battle on this. I've had mine. But, you know, together we have said cancer has no place in our bodies. We take authority over cancer. We curse every cancer cell in our bodies in Jesus' name. And we have been fighting this thing. We have been taking up the shield of faith that says we are not going to be afraid. We've had to encourage each other. We've had to build each other up. We've had to talk about this. We've had to remind one another of spiritual truth. We've shared devotions with each other. We've prayed for each other. We've laid hands on one another. And we have fought this thing in addition to eating chicken noodle soup. But we've seen this for what it is. It's an attempt of the enemy to steal our health and to fill us with fear. And we're like, you know what, devil, we're not having this. We are healed in Jesus' name. And so we fight this good fight of faith. We use the truth of God's word to stand against the lies of the devil. And we put him to flight by resisting him. And we, we endeavor to do this for you guys as well. I, man, you guys are taking a lot of my prayer time these days. It's like, Man, my list of people that are battling is just like, wow, there's a lot of people that are just really going through it right now. But that's okay. This is our job, isn't it? To all, this isn't just for preachers. Okay, all right. This, this verse isn't just for preachers. All of us are to always keep on praying for all the saints you know, if you can sit there and say, well, you know, I've been pretty healthy, praise God. Okay, but have you been fighting on behalf of others who have been sick? 
If you have been sick and I have known about it, I have prayed for you. I can tell you that with certainty. If you have been sick and I have known about it, I have prayed for you probably not just once because this is what we've got to do. We have got to resist the devil. The day of evil, don't wait for it. It's here. It's here. Call it COVID-19. I watched a movie this week. Yes, it was Netflix about COVID-21. I was like, ah, no. How many, how many more variants and sagas to come? I don't know. But I'm not going to operate in fear because Jesus has got me. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is your healer. You know, this, this is such an important battle to stand strong. And I think probably one of the hardest things to manage, and I am winding this down, although I don't really have to. It's not 11 yet. You're going to be okay, Tony. <laughs> is to watch the confession of my mouth. Because when I don't feel well, my confession tends to dive. I hurt, I hurt, I'm tired, you know, and, and I kind of start focusing on the symptoms of what I'm feeling. So I want to encourage you out there in Facebook land, those of you in the house, we have to guard the testimony of our lips. I love Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him. Now, who's the him? It's Satan. It's the work of the devil in the end times. But it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That They put their confidence in the finished work of the cross, the blood of the lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and, and this is the one, and the word, the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives so much as to shrink from death. In other words, they were willing to die for what they believed. But that testimony, what we say is so important. We need to speak faith. Now you say, well, pastor, that does, seems kind of bogus to speak that I'm healed when I feel crummy. No, it's faith. It's faith to stand up and say, Jesus has got me. He's going to bring me through. I am healed by his stripes. I'm resisting you, devil, and I command you to take this COVID from my body and be gone. I resist you, spirit of cancer, and I command you to flee in Jesus' name. The testimony of my lips is powerful. There's no other voice that is so important as your own voice. What are you saying to yourself? Are you pointing yourself to the Bible? Or are you pointing yourself to the fear that's going on? I mean, this is a battle. If this were easy, it wouldn't be a battle. But it is a battle, and it's not easy, especially when you're sick. I get that. You don't feel like fighting. You just want to be left alone in a dark place. But the fact is, is you've got a battle to fight. There's a war going on against your family, against your church family. Are, are you tracking with me out there, church? So I'm tired, Pastor. You're telling me to work harder. Hey, let us not give in to the liar, the deceiver, the enemy of all that is good. God's plan for us is to walk in healing. One last verse, James chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Can you get an amen out of that? Say, well, yeah, a righteous man. I don't know, Pastor, I've, I've messed up quite a bit. Are you a follower of Jesus? If you are a follower of Jesus, you know what? You are a righteous man or woman because it's not about what you've done. It's about who you believe in, and Jesus has changed your life. You can pray with power. That verse tells us, and that's why I offered this anointing oil. If you want to take one of these bottles home, your kid gets sick, you know what? You can open that little bottle up. You can get your Bible out to James chapter 5. You can 
put a little dab on your finger, you can lay your hand on them and you can pray and the prayer of faith heals the sick. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. You can make a difference. You don't have to, to just sit there and take it every time the devil gives you a kick. We can resist the devil and when we resist him and submit ourselves to God, he flees. We are the head church and not the tail. Can I get a witness? Amen. That was about 203 of you. Great. Hallelujah. You know, I know this is a tough time. And, and it, we're starting to get to, to COVID fatigue where we are just like, I'm just so done with this. But you know what? The battle goes on. And because it goes on, we have to keep going on. We have to fight this thing. We've got to resist. We've got to stand on the finished work of the cross. We need to be praying for each other. We need to be standing strong and believing God to do what his word says. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're on the winning side of this. You stick with Jesus. You're going to be okay. Daryl, you're going to make it, man. You're, you're good. God's got you. God's got Owen. You guys are going to make it. You stick with Jesus. It's okay. I don't care what the devil tries to do. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So you came out to church today and you must believe at least half of this already before you got here or you'd have had good reason to stay home. But you're here because you know that this is a battle and we need to get our batteries charged up. You out there on Facebook, if you are home because you're quarantined or you're sick, I hope that this message is getting into your heart and your understanding that there is a way for us to fight back. We don't have to give in to fear. We can operate in faith that God is for us, not against us, that he loves us and that his plan for us is good. And so today I would just like to ask everybody in the house to stand with me. I'm not even going to attempt to to name names of people that I know have called in with various sickness, but there, there are a lot of them. And because you felt well enough to be here today, then I believe there's enough energy in the house that we can align our prayers for those that are sick. But if today you have any weakness in your body or your extended family needs a healing touch, we're going to pray today for the miracle power of Jesus to be revealed. Are you, are you ready to do that? I mean, we, we've said that this is a choice. It's a battle. But we've got to fight this good fight of faith. We've got to take that sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and we've got to always keep on praying for all the saints. And we can make a difference, church. We're not going to give in to fear. Amen? We are a people of faith. So let's pray right now. Father God, we thank you for the healing power of the blood of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your cross. We thank you that on that cross, you paid the penalty for our sins to deliver us from the death penalty of disobedience. Jesus, you died so that we could live, but Jesus, you also died so that we could live free from the bondage of sickness and disease. And so Jesus, right now, we just claim the sufficiency of your cross to heal the sick. We thank you, Jesus, that your blood today, your stripes today are the source of healing for all who will believe. And so, Father God, right now, across the cyberspace, God, reaching into homes of people that are listening in, right now, in Jesus' name, I loose the healing power of Jesus' blood to restore people who are sick with COVID and other issues to raise up those that are weak and broken and bound father right now over this entire house i just pray the power of the blood of jesus to set captives free to restore to health and strength we come against autoimmune disease we come against cancer we come against parkinson's we take authority over heart disease and 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 lung disease we come against covid and every variant in jesus name and devil we resist you and in Jesus name you must flee and we enforce the victory of the cross today we declare that by his stripes we are healed and father we pray this over every person who will watch this service God let faith rise up in their souls God we do not operate in fear but we are motivated by faith 
We stand strong in you and in the power of your might, Father God. We resist the devil, even on this evil day. God, we thank you that we have authority and power in Jesus' name to destroy the works of the devil. Thank you, Jesus, for using us today. And God, I just pray, anybody, if you need a healing touch in your body, would you just right now raise a hand? Just raise a hand right now. Father God, I'm, I just thank you that healing is being released in this place right now for ourselves, our spouses, our children. God, we thank you that there is healing in Jesus' name and we loose that power of healing to bring life and restore and give grace. Father, thank you for healing those with needs today, for delivering us, God, from a spirit of fear and filling us today with a spirit of faith. We shall live and not die. We shall recover and be strong in Jesus' name. And we declare that today. And all 300 of us here today said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Now the battle continues because you're going to leave here. And you're going to face challenges. You're going to face a spirit of fear. But I want to encourage you, stay close to the Word of God. Watch what you say. Guard the confession of your mouth. Speak God's truth. We'll say, well, I won't speak it, but I'll think it. Think God's truth and speak God's truth. What happens in your brain matters. Don't give place to a spirit of fear. Jesus wants to fill us with his joy and with his peace. Amen. All right, thank you for being here. God bless you as you go home. Stay safe. Have a great week in Jesus.